Hi everyone and welcome back. It's Vicky here and today I'm sharing an art journal that I have been working on during the weekend. I'm working on my Moleskine sketchbook and I'm going to protect the previous pages with some uh, printer paper there. And I'm going to bring in my black gesso. This is by Deco Art. It's from their media collection. And uh, I'm going to completely cover both my pages with black gesso. You can apply gesso with uh, a spatula like I'm doing here or you can use a credit card, you can use your brush if you like. I prefer uh, to apply it with my spatula because it's going to give me some texture on my pages. Once my gesso was dry, I grabbed my texture paste. This is a paste by Prima and uh, although it looks white, as you can see here, it is actually going to dry clear and uh, it is going to give me a crackle effect. So this is going to add uh, lots of texture on your pages. Now, depending on how you apply the paste, you will get a different effect. So if you apply a thick layer, you will get big crackles. And if you apply a very thin one, you will get uh, smaller ones, tiny ones, and not as textured. Now, you are supposed to leave this to air dry, but if you wish, you can go ahead and use your heat gun to heat set it. But remember that you will get a beautiful effect if you leave it as it is and you don't force it with a heat gun. However, I'm very impatient. I didn't have time to wait for that. So I went ahead and used my heat gun to speed up the drying process. I didn't get as much, many crackles as I wanted to, but I do have some texture at the background. Now I'm going to use uh, three different colors by DecoArt. These are from their media collection. They are fluid acrylics and I'm going to apply uh, some of them on my craft mat. By the way, I'm working on a glass mat that makes it super easy for me to clean later on. And I would definitely suggest a glass mat if you are into mixed media. With a brush, I'm applying uh, my color on top of my page and it's going to be super easy for me to create a night sky since I'm starting with a black page. All I need to do is to add a touch of blue in different areas. Now I'm going to mix in some lighter colors of blue and uh, I'm going to create a Milky Way. So just add uh, some uh, touches of uh, light blue on your sky in a line, just like I'm doing here. Blend it out and you are uh, ready to go. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, this is not a painting. This is just an art journal. And um, the purpose of it is just to have fun and play with your mediums. Now you can play around with all those blue hues until you are happy with the outcome. And now the idea is to create a big moon on my night sky. So I have used the uh, dyes to cut out a circle. Now I'm going to create a highlight of the moon, so I'm dipping a stiff brush on white gesso and I'm just going to apply some uh, white gesso just behind the moon. And this is going to provide me a nice base for uh, when I will try to add that uh, shine from the moon. And I'm going to leave it as it is for now. Now I'm going to apply some white splashes. I'm using white gesso diluted with water and uh, I hope you can see how it transforms my night sky. So you can um, definitely see how the Milky Way looks now. And um, you don't have to apply as many splashes as I do. I just love splashes and uh, I can't stop myself. And while my splashes are drying, I just wanted to show you how easy it is to clean this glass mat. If you get any dried acrylic paint on top of it, just use a spatula like I'm doing here and everything is nice and clean. Now I'm going to work on my moon and I'm going to apply some uh, Distress Oxide ink on top of my glass mat. I'm spraying with water and I'm going to apply the moon on top. I don't want to get a full coverage, I like uh, splashes here and there and uh, just because uh, that's how the moon looks. Now the, the color that I'm using is fossilized amber which I think uh, is the perfect color for my moon and I'm also going to add some uh, darker spots by using some vintage photo. Again I applied my ink on top of my glass mat, sprayed a little bit with water and I'm even using my fingers to control the ink the way I want to. I want to have some light areas, definitely keep some uh, light areas on your moon. It's going to help it look more realistic and it's going to make it as if it is glowing. 
And I'm going to repeat that one more time, adding some more uh, yellow ink, more fossilized amper. I'm using my heat gun to speed up the drying process. And by the way, the paper I'm working on is a mixed media paper by Ranger. So it takes uh, water and any type of medium really well and it doesn't warp. Now I'm going to bring the moon on top of my page and you will see how beautiful it looks against that background. And since this is uh, going to be an art journal, I can play with my stamps as much as I like. So I'm going to add uh, more texture on my moon by using this stamp. This is a texture stamp by an older Tim Holtz uh, stamp set. And notice that I'm not going darker, I'm using the same fossilized amber color just to add a little texture but at the same time keep it quite subtle. And here I'm using another texture stamp and this time I'm not introducing again another color. I'm working with a vintage photo that I have already applied for the darker areas of my moon. And I'm happy with how my moon looks at the moment so I will go ahead and stick it on my page. To stick everything down I'm using matte medium and notice that I am covering up the moon as well. I don't mind if I move the ink a little bit. After all this doesn't have to be perfect. But remember that if uh, your brush is too wet, it might uh, react with the ink underneath and uh, smear what you have created. Now I'm using a big brush marker to apply some uh, white on different areas of my moon just to help it uh, lighten up a little bit more. This is going to help it look as if it is shining. Now I'm happy with how my background is looking at the moment, so I am going to work on uh, some elements that I will stick on top of that to create my little scene. So I'm going to use uh, dyes from these two Sizzix sets, so the city as well as the Santa here. So I'm going to bring in my Big Shot and cut everything out of black cardstock. Now, as always, you will find links to all the supplies that I'm using for creating this art journal down below the description area of my YouTube as well as on my blog. And I'm making sure that I link uh, to most of the supplies in both US and UK uh, online shops for your convenience. Now, when I place the buildings on top of my background, they don't stand out. The background is so busy and so dark that it's uh, very hard for them to stand out. And that's why I'm going to work on the background again. And uh, that's the beauty of working with acrylics. You can go over them again and again and uh, make them work out for you. So all I'm doing here is applying a wash of uh, light of blue. And as you can see, I'm covering up completely all those white brushes, splashes. And um, by doing that it kind of uh, makes the background more subtle and uh, pushes all those stars more at the background. And now I'm going to lighten up the bottom a little bit more so that when I apply the black buildings on top they will stand out. Another thing that is going to help the building stand out against that uh, night sky is if you add uh, highlights. So I'm using a finger dabber here and with the same fossilized amber distress oxide ink that I used for the moon, I'm going to lighten up only one side of the buildings. So I'm working only on the right side and I'm adding some uh, ink there. And I'm going to do that for both my cutouts. Now before sticking down my buildings I went ahead and worked again on my background so I added white splashes and now I have a beautiful uh, sky with um, blue stars that uh, look as if they are far at the background. I have white splashes that they look as if they are shining a lot and I'm also going to add some uh, gold splashes just because I can. I just love splashes. I think I'm going to create an art journal just by using this technique. And here is a close-up so you can see all those beautiful colors on my sky. And here is how my skyline looks with uh, the shine on one side of the buildings. And I'm going to exaggerate that a little bit more. And since I introduced gold paint on the background with the stars, I'm going to add some of that with a thin brush on the sides. And I don't have to be neat. I can be as messy as I like. It's going to look beautiful at the end. And now as always I'm going to use my matte medium and stick everything down. And of course for sticking down the elements you can uh, use any type of adhesive that you like. You can use uh, a stick glue, a white glue, whatever you like. I just happen to love my matte medium and I tend to stick everything down with that. 
Now I'm going to use this uh, gold nouveau marker and I'm going to add some uh, details uh, here and there. There are actually cut out windows but they look uh, black at the moment since I have a black background and that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just filling in those gaps with my uh, gold marker but of course you can do it with a brush and the gold uh, acrylic paint. To highlight the buildings even more, I'm using my white gel pen and I'm going to add some uh, lines on uh, the right side of my buildings. This is a technique that I really love and I go back to again and again. It's going to highlight the buildings even more. And finally, to finish off my scene, I have to stick down Santa. And uh, just because uh, this is a long die cut, I'm going to stick a part of it on one page and just the first reindeer on the other page. Again, as always, I'm using my matte medium to stick him down. And again, I'm going to use my white gel pen and add some highlights on my die cut. And I'm going to zoom in for you so you can see how awesome it looks with all that highlighting. Now I have these ribbons by Tim Holtz that I'm going to apply in different areas. In the package there are these uh, black ones but you also get uh, white ones that would uh, give a great contrast against the black uh, background. So for the moon I'm going to add some of the text and this is all about Christmas. And I had these ribbons in my stash forever. I don't think they are still available, but uh, there are other Christmas ribbons by Tim Holtz again. And uh, they come in different uh, colors like in gold. And I'm going to make sure that I link you down below in case you want to check them out. Now I'm using the white ones and I'm going to apply some of the words along the buildings just to add some interest there. Now when I started the page I had uh, the quote in my mind so I was going to go with uh, believe in the magic of Christmas or something like that but when I finished the page I was in a very fun mood and I decided to go with something more hilarious so I picked uh, some of my chipboard letters and uh, I'm going to write Dear Santa I can explain. These chipboard letters are in my stash forever. They have a pattern on top of them and I believe they are by uh, Seven Gypsies. I don't know if uh, they are available anymore. I believe they are discontinued. And just because they don't match the rest of my theme, I am just covering them up with my uh, acrylic gold paint. And I'm going to stick all those letters on top of my layout. I am using uh, Nouveau Deluxe white glue to stick them down. But of course you can use your matte medium or whatever else you like. And just because these are uh, not available anymore, I will try and find similar uh, chipboard letters and link them down below. I have printed out the rest of my quote and I'm going to stick that down with my matte medium. So the whole quote says, Dear Santa, I can explain. And now for the finishing touches, I am using a flat brush and I am applying some gold paint around the edges of my layout just to frame it a little bit. I don't have to be neat again. You can go as uh, far in as you like. And I always like to have uh, borders around my art, either with stencils or with stamps or just applying it uh, with uh, paint, just like I'm doing here, because I find that framing uh, my layout always makes it mo look more finished. Now I'm going to use the small from my Faber-Castell pens there and I'm going to add some lines around my sentiment. I keep my lines very sketchy. I don't want to have anything neat there. And this is going to finish off my layout for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired and if you did don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me thumbs up on my YouTube channel. You will find links to all the products that I used down below in the description area as well as on my blog. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for a fun release.